Okay. Okay, three, two, one. Hi, uh, we're here at the social media booth at uh, CA World 16 in Las Vegas. Uh, we've just wrapped up with the opening keynote with our CEO, Mike Gregoire, and we are honored to be joined here by two of the panel members, uh, Bert Rutan and Natalie Panek. Uh, welcome, if you'd like to tell the audience a little bit about yourselves uh, and, your, and your background. I'm known for being prolific in developing research airplanes, working on my 47th now, and an average of one per year. The two notable ones was in 1986, when we flew non-stop, non-refueled around the world in Voyager, and of course the second one was 12 years ago when, it, when we did a manned space program without any government. Excellent. Um, Natalie, I wanted to start with you. Um, you, you shared uh, a couple of stories from your, your years uh, getting into the, the space program, and your story is really one of perseverance. Um, so I wanted to ask, what advice would you offer young aspiring astronauts or aspiring rocket scientists how to get into the program? Well, I think a technical degree is a good place to start, but I think hands-on experience is probably more valuable than a lot of what you'll learn in books, getting a chance to And of course, STEM is going to be a key issue uh, throughout this week. It's very important to CA Technologies. For both of you, um, how do we reach out to the next generation? How do we inspire them to get into STEM careers? Well, STEM is driven by passion, really. Uh, right after the Apollo moon landings, uh, early 70s, America was number one in awarding STEM advanced degrees at our universities. Now America is like number 30. So the reason that STEM, we didn't call it STEM in those days, we called it math, science, engineering. Uh, the reason that that was so hot and so wonderful is people were excited by the fact that we put out there a, a, a horrific, unachievable, impossible goal of just in a few years, actually eight, of, of developing systems to put people on the moon and to bring them back safely. Uh, you know, the reason I kind of got a little emotional on that is we don't have goals like that now. Mm -hmm. I think if you're going to promote STEM, uh, you're going to start with setting a goal that's, that's impossible, mm -hmm. but exciting, and then having those people that are going to be the students and the teachers mm -hmm. uh, get on board with that goal. Sure. And then all of a sudden STEM happens. It doesn't happen by just saying, gee, let's put so many dollars into STEM. Mm -hmm. You know, kids nowadays get excited because their iPhone is bigger and, hey, I've got one more <laughs> line of icons. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> you, you know, and yet... Uh, all the space travel now goes to the same place that we did it with John Glenn. Sure. It goes to the same place. Mm -hmm. That's that inspiring. It's been almost 50 years we go to the same place. Mm -hmm. There's nothing exciting about that. Sure. Yeah, you need, really. you need a vision. You need to teach young people how to take risks and how to be able to make decisions yep. quickly, not get bogged down by politics and paperwork and bureaucracy, and also to be technology savvy, not technology dependent. I think you have to try something new that requires breakthroughs in order to achieve. Mm -hmm. Breakthroughs are, are extremely, a breakthrough is something you don't know about, and when it, when it happens, you say, oh my God, look at what we have now. Uh, I don't see those out there now. Mm -hmm. we, we, we need to set impossible-like goals, and then breakthroughs happen because, because technical people have the passion to try it. Mm -hmm. Natalie, um, I wanted to, to touch on a story that you told. So during your undergrad, um, you built a solar uh, panel powered car that you took on quite a road trip. I was curious, um, where is the car now? Did you ever take it out for a spin? <laughs> uh, I actually don't know where that car ended up, but what's I think really impressive is that when we first built that car in 2005, it was designed to win a race, to be very, very aerodynamic, which means it was low to the ground, shaped like an 
aircraft weighing something that would never be viable in everyday life for people to pick up their kids or go get groceries. But since then, it started a legacy of solar cars where teams wanted to start trying to actually make it usable instead of just win a race. So having the driver sit upright in the car, having storage space for groceries, and I think that's what's important. And a final question for both of you. Obviously, you both got great stories. And I was curious, um, growing up, who were both of your biggest, um, uh, who inspired you the most? You know, who, who do you look to for inspiration? Kelly Johnson and Warner Von Braun. And uh, I, I never got to, uh, well, excuse me. I, I met Kelly Johnson just once. And in 1965, halfway between Gagarin and the moon landing, uh, Werner von Braun and I both uh, were given awards. I was a national student award for college, so I got a chance to meet him. Um, in that room where we had kind of a little meet and greet cocktails before we went out to accept our award at the AIAA meeting in San Francisco, if you didn't know what von Braun looked like, you could walk into that room and pick him out. <laughs> he seemed to be a giant, uh, and he was surrounded by people that were listening and didn't even want to talk. They wanted to listen to what he had to say. Uh, that was my biggest inspiration. And of course, uh, Von Braun was with Walt Disney in 1955, and I was 12, on Disneyland television showing how we're going to go to Mars. And in those days, hey, we thought there might be intelligent people on Mars. <laughs> well, you don't have anything exciting like that now. Nope. They've sent all these damn <laughs> robots out there and showed that it's just a desert. Yeah. You've got to think of what Magellan thought when he found that pathway to Magellan Straits. He realized there were probably other humans there, mm -hmm. but he didn't know. He didn't know whether they would be smarter than him. Sure. Right? And Natalie. That's exciting. Yeah. We don't have excitement like that anymore. It's all been ruined by by this uh, by big mistakes. Mm -hmm. When NASA said to probe to Mars, they should land it downtown, not out in the desert. Mm -hmm. And also, they ought to lie to us and tell us that that's really a face on Mars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we'll get excited. We want to go, right? Sure. But instead. They tell the truth, and the truth <laughs> is that why go to there? It's just another desert like the Mojave. Uh -huh. Thank you. And Natalie? I'd probably have to say my high school physics teacher. She taught me to always attempt more challenging problems and to see the value of a life built around science and engineering. Excellent. Great. Well, thank, thank you both you. so much, um, and we look forward to any further questions uh, off, off, off camera. Thank you. Thanks.